This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Drive out with a car! With your host, Mark Martinez. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. And the English professor. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. Can Crusher Nation, welcome back to Can Crusher Spotlight. I am your host, Mark Martinez. And boy, do I have a great interview for you. I shook this one out of the locker room. And man, oh man, I'm excited to talk a lot of wrestling with the longest reigning light heavyweight champion in WWF history, a member of the Job Squad, a member or a good friend of our good friend, Al Snow. Yeah, if you put two and two together, you know it's the man they call Gilberg. Guys, I got Dwayne Gill coming on the show, and there's so much I, I can't wait to ask him. He, he said he's going to sit down and talk with us, and I'm excited. Uh, we ran into uh, Gilberg in November at WrestleCade, and he instantly, he's like, hey, you guys are the garbage guys. You guys are hanging out with Al Snow down in OVW and everything. We had a great conversation down in Winston-Salem at WrestleCade, and he, uh, we finally found time, is the best way to put it. We finally found time to get him on. Our schedule's matched up, and we run with it. So now it's time for all the questions. How come we didn't see the Toxic Turtles as long as we did? Uh, being a member of the Job Squad, what was that really like? Uh, how do you get a start in wrestling? Because all of a sudden, Dwayne Gill just pops up. There's just so much. But guys, truthfully, this guy is a wonderful human being. He gave us so much time at WrestleCade. You've seen the pictures that I've posted with him, of him, and everything. He is a wonderful human being. And I just can't wait to sit down and talk to him for a while. But And we'll get there. We'll get there. Because we have to talk to Al Snow first. He's going to tell us all about collar and elbow. And all the stuff that he brings along with it. Hats, hoodies, tees, all the great merchandise. Guys, you hear me over and over every show. Just pumping up collar and elbow. And just telling you how great the the apparel is. It, it's wonderful. It's it's soft. It's I'm 42, guys. I like a soft shirt. I really do. Let's get let's bring it back down and get sensual a little bit. No, a soft shirt with the Macho Man shirt with Allen head on it. I, I you hear me all the time. It's by far my favorite shirt. My wife continually asks me, "Stop wearing this shirt." Any pictures we're taking, you know, good pictures, not nothing we're putting up on Facebook or anything. But I'm wearing that shirt. We go out to a party. I got my collar and elbow shirt on. We go out somewhere else. I got my collar and elbow hoodie. Come on, you know, I'm in collar and elbow all the time just because it's great wearing gear uh so guys let's send it over to al and then we're going to come back with an interview i've been waiting months for and i'm excited for it and let's see how this goes if he's as crazy he was as a uh, wrestlecade man i don't know where this interview is going to go but i'm excited wrestling a love and a passion we all share i've started a wrestling brand the wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. And welcome. 
welcome back, guys. Don't forget to sign up for Collar and Elbow, all the hats, hoodies, and everything, and use the promo code CANCRUSHERS. But it's time to get to our main reason why we're here for the spotlight this week. We're here with the longest reigning light heavyweight champion in WWE history, WWF history, actually, and a member of the Job Squad, Mr. Dwayne Gill, Gilberg, how are you doing? Good, good, good. How are you doing tonight, man? Uh, amazing, amazing. It was it was something special meeting you at WrestleCade. Um, the picture that you posed for me is classic. I, I thank you for that great experience at WrestleCade, first off. Oh, that was my pleasure, man. You know how I am, man. I love my fans. I love it. Yeah, you really do. You've gone above and beyond. I kind of was like just lingering and seeing everything you were doing because we talked about Al and each person that you met at WrestleCade, um, you did something different and you made it, you know, that five, ten minutes having them with you, you poured your heart out to each person and I respect that wholeheartedly uh, as well as the Can Crusher Nation does. Thank you for taking every moment with us. Oh, it's my pleasure, man. Like I say, uh, well, my 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 reason is without fans, there is no us. You know what I mean? We are, you know, we're we're there because of the fans. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I I completely agree. And you were a fan at one point, so let's do the whole. Oh. I was the biggest fan at one point, buddy. <laughs> Let me tell you, wrestling was one hundred percent like UFC until I stepped in the ring to learn how to wrestle. Oh, so, so who was I a fan? Was I a fan? <laughs> you, for sure. Who introduced you to the the sport of wrestling that we all love right now? Was it you know, Grandpa, Dad? Who was it? It was my my father. Me and my father. See, back when I was young. Um, wrestling only came on one time a week, and it was at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, and it was on WBFF Channel 45, and uh, it was right, it, it was WWWF, it was right at the turn of WWF, when Vince took it over yep. from his dad and turned it into WWF. Well, right about then is when I started watching it, you know, my father, and I mean to tell you, I was such a fan, if I was up at the up at the baseball field playing baseball and somebody said hey it's 350 and i was batting i would drop the bat and run home seriously uh, my, for real my father would be sitting there with a bowl of popcorn and we'd sit down for that hour that's uh, i could see you doing it too yeah and then uh we moved to florida and we had standing reservations at the Eddie Graham Sports Arena every month. Man, we were right there where they came out and everything. So who were some of the people that you inspired to be then as a, as a young Gilberg? Oh, oh man, no. it, who, who inspired me was, you know, Road Warriors, uh, you know, uh, I mean, Dusty Rhodes, you know, uh, Bruno San Martino, Larry Zabisco, Tony Gurria. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those are the guys. I mean, I'm talking to Ivan Putsky. You know what I'm saying? Dust those are the guys that I watched. <laughs> you brought up Dusty, and let's talk about Dusty a minute because, I mean, you're you're about 20 years older than me, um, and he's influenced me to love the sport. And then you have Gold Dust and Cody. You know, my son likes wrestling because he saw me watching Dusty. So he's transcended eras and decades and generations he's probably my number one don't wouldn't you think he's pretty important dusty you gotta remember when i watched dusty dusty was at the eddie graham sports arena right you know what i mean with billy graham and all them dusty was still young and the big boom i mean every time he hit an elbow that place lit up oh boom 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 and he was spinning fist boom i mean man god yeah, Dusty, <laughs> and 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 see what was the best to me was that I got to meet and become friends with all of these people that I watched for years. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it was just, it was just like, wow, man, wow. <laughs> I I'm living my life with you right now because I can see all of right. it just going through, and I'm I'm jealous. I really am because everybody you've named. How do you, uh, how do you think I felt? sit down and play a hand of gin 
with Arnold Skolin and Andre the Giant. Uh, I, you were beside yourself, literally beside yourself, <laughs> right? <laughs> Dude, I would have, I would have gave a hundred dollars a hand. He got lost. I lost. I lost. I lost. I lost. I lost. <laughs> I would have, man. I wouldn't have cared just to sit there. Oh my you know god! I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. What? So, what was the main besides the love for it? As we were, uh, you know, my mom duly named me Mark, so I'm a Mark. I, I will completely admit it. I'm a Mark. Um, who made you actually get into wrestling? Besides the love, there had to have been a spark saying, "Damn it, I know I can do this." Oh, no, 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 no. Listen to this. This is the God's honest truth. My partner, Barry Hardy. You know Barry Hardy, I do. Right? Yep. All right. When I first met Barry and was hanging out with Barry and everything, I used to watch wrestling. He go, man, I ain't watching that fake shit. And I'm like, dude, it's not fake. I'm telling you, dude, these monks, man, they're, they're killing each other, man. This shit is not thought. I ain't watching that shit. Excuse me. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Like, okay. We're, we're good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, but that that's uh that's what they were doing and uh it, it was you know, so I would go home and watch it and then come back and we hang out again, you know what I mean? And uh and then of course I got married, he got married, we, we you know, separate you know, we, we just quit hanging out, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then one day I'm watching wrestling and I go, Holy shit, that's Barry. And he goes, Barry Hardy. And I go, but he's a lot bigger. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, a little bit more muscular. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. I said, he's a lot bigger. I said, man, I got his mother's number. So I'm watching it, and I call his mother. And and she's like, hi, Dwayne. How you doing? I said, hi. She's a long time. I said, where's Barry? I said, I'm sitting here watching him on TV. Is this, is this my Barry? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. She goes, he's home next to recording. And I go, what? So I, I go, can I have his number? She said, yes. Yeah. So I called Barry. And Barry goes, dude, I have been looking everywhere for you. Where do you live? And I told him where I live. And I go, he goes, you live like six blocks from me. Are you shitting me? <laughs> <laughs> I went over his house that night. And we laid a piece of half inch um, foam padding and a piece of carpet down on the concrete. And I started learning to hit tosses and arm drags. So Barry was your that first night. trainer then? Barry taught me everything. There was no other trainer. No kidding. No, Barry Hardy taught me. Barry Hardy went to the Monster Factory. And then Barry took me up to meet Larry Sharp to see if I could go to WWF to do jobs. So Barry... And I could do I could do one thing that nobody else could do. On a 16, 18, and I, almost on a 20-foot ring, if you bring me in the hard way... You know, slingshot me in. I can go all the way across the ring, bump, and go out the other side. Oh my! Yeah, you know, you've done that. You've done that several times. Yeah. And Larry was walking out of his office, and I was in the ring with uh, it was uh, Glenn Ruth, and I know you know who that is. Yeah. Thrasher. It was Thrasher and and Barry were against me and Ray Odyssey. And uh, we were going at it and going at it and going at it. You know, me and Barry and Barry and Jimmy goes, all right, here comes Larry. Let's do it. And he throws me out of the ring. And I get up on the apron. He punches me and goes, bing. And I go all the way across the ring and go out the other side, right? Hit and go right through the ropes. He goes, and then Larry goes, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. And we're all like, what, what? And he goes, I don't believe I saw what I think I just saw. Can you do that again? And we go, what? And he goes, the, the coming in the hard way. I go, sure. So we get there, and he starts punching. Stop, stop. I don't punch. Don't be. Come in the hard way. So Barry goes, you ready? I said, yep. And he goes, bang. I went, bang. Out there, so I stood up and said, there. How's that, Larry? And he goes, yeah, you can go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah, you can go. And that was the start of, you know, WWF for me. Ooh. That weekend, I was on my way up. What what shocks me from that that story right there is that Barry was the one saying, and this is the first time it's ever been said on, on Can Crushers, you know, that it's fake, and it, we we don't believe it's fake. We, we hate that word on here, but he's the one saying it's fake, it's fake, it's fake, and all of a sudden the son of a gun gets he into it first. Up, he, you know what happened to him? He we we knew a uh, we knew a um, 
a, a councilman, right? We know a councilman that, that around here, and he had ringside seats. And one time he couldn't go, so he called Barry and said, "Hey, Barry, you want to go?" And Barry was just, "Ah, what the heck? I'll go." And Hulk Hogan was on the card. And he got sold right off the bat, then, right? Hogan walked out. He was done. I'm in love with this guy. This 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 whole sport. I love everything about it. He felt the electricity. He felt Hogan. You know what I mean? I don't know if oh. you've ever been there when Hogan came out, boy. But I, oh yeah. my god. Yeah. I had I actually I actually had a match with Sandman about uh, three four months ago, and uh, I said, you know what? I'm going in the ring first. He goes, what? No, no, no. I said, uh uh-uh, man. I'm going in the ring first. He said, why? I said, I want to watch your entrance. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, what? I said, oh, hell yeah. I ain't never seen it from that point. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? His is one of my favorite entrances oh, as well, too. With he's the- awesome. He's, awesome. He's, got, he's got the best entrance. I don't care what anybody says. He's got the best entrance. Yeah, he's everybody. I don't care where you go, where you go, what you do, sing and start jamming when he walks out. He's loaded before yeah. he gets in the ring. Yeah, good he's for him. Great, man, he's a great guy. Though he's a great guy. He is. I don't know if you know him, but he is an awesome person. He really is. He came to, and we're going to get to IWC because you were in IWC as well. But we'll get to that. Uh, he came to IWC, and we got to talk to him a little bit. So yeah. But let's go back to your early years, because I have a big question that, you you know, you guys were under masks. Was that for a purpose that, you know, or because you were young? We brought back the executioners so we could work more. Right. Was it it because you were young? Wayne Gill and Barry Hardy can go out and wrestle and come in and throw in on and throw some uh, hoods on and a pair of tights and two matches later go back out and wrestle again. Look, I, I feel I got as good as I did. Uh, at my craft is because I wanted to get in that ring as much as I could. As much as man, me and Barry, or Barry and I, to be correct. Oh, uh, we're not going to correct um, you. Wanted to get in the ring. Wanted to get in the ring. We didn't give a shit what. We just wanted to wrestle. And everybody's like, "How can you go up there and job and job?" Hey, how do you get better? Wrestle the best in the world. Where's the best in the world? In WWF. Where do you make the most money doing that in WWF? Hmm. Why do I want to go up there and job? Let me think. I'm wrestling all the stars I've ever imagined just to talk to are becoming my friends, and I'm earning respect from them, and they're teaching me ways to do everything and be better. And You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah I, 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 to- I honed my craft in WWF. You know, Barry and I were on the road 20, 25 days a month for a while there on the B tour and never had a contract. Really? Never a contract at all? Yeah, doing house shows, doing house shows. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That any. Barry Hardy, I I owe, I owe, you know, it all to Barry, you know. And I'll never forget him for teaching me how to wrestle and everything, man. I owe the guy, you know what I mean? He's the man. Before. I wonder if you had never paid a dime. Before we broke his nose a couple of times, <laughs> you know, learn how to wrestle. You know what I mean. Before we get to some of the the greats, I want to talk to you about is is there a, a road story you can tell us about uh, you and Barry getting into a little trouble or anything? Ah, uh, not really trouble because I was always the older guy and was like dad to everybody. You know what I mean? Um, but we did used to have some awesome food fights, man. I mean, like, we used to buy cases of those little uh, um, tasty cakes, the chocolate ones with the cream filling. Yeah. Because it's 60 mile an hour, man. They hit a wind chase. <laughs> <Doom, doom. laughs> We're just throwing them out. Boom, 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 boom. Go, going down yeah, the interstate. Man. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Food fights. But I'm talking about what other cars are wrestlers. Right. And they got, man, we got, I got hit with a tuna sub at about 90 miles. <laughs> it wiped out. And, man, one night we were going down the road, and I mean, you tell you, we're doing 85. And uh, it's pitch dark. And I just stopped and bought a coffee. So I had, like, a 20-ounce coffee, and I love cream and sugar in my coffee. So it's basically a milk coffee, right? 
and we're going down the road, and I go, hell with it. We're winning this battle. And I hold my hand out the window, and I just throw it straight up in the air. And I'm watching in the mirror, and all of a sudden, the whole front of Glenn Roos' car turns milk. It hit right dead center of the windshield. He starts swerving all over the road and everything. I mean, I thought for sure I killed him. I really thought he was going to wreck. That's how bad it was. <laughs> Whatever. He's like, dude, that's my mom's car. We all had to go to a car work and work the car and all. Oh my God! This is this is unbelievable. This is this is getting out of control. Food fights going down the road, and a tuna sandwich damn near took you out. That's oh yeah, I mean a sub, dude. <laughs> yeah, all right, a sub, a sub like from Subway, you know, twelve twelve foot longer. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we you, have some fun, man. You're you're wrestling some. The, the greatest names in WWF, the greatest names earlier in your career. Um, can we touch on four or five? And I, I would really like to start with Owen Hart because he's um, one of the greats all the time. Yeah, I, I love him. I love wrestling Owen Hart. Owen Hart was one of the nicest guys you ever meet in the world. And to be honest with you, Owen Hart was the first person that really let me know I was part of the locker room. Because we were on tour, doing house shows, and I came in after my match, and Owen's gone, and he's supposed to be there, you know what I mean? And uh, my bag's in the shower. I'm like, oh. So the next night, go after my match, come in, everybody's gone. And I'm getting dressed, and I get I take my shower, get dressed, you know what I mean? And uh, I spied my shoes out, and they're full of ice water. <laughs> I'm like, oh. So then I walked into the hotel, because, of course, I had to wear my boots, right? And Owen's in the lobby. Hey, that must be one of them wrestler guys there. Look at that. <laughs> so I was getting ribbed, which makes you know you're part of the boys. When you get ribbed, then you're part of the family. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. And, and he and was one of the best, right? Oh, my God. Ellen was the best. He was the best. Not one of the best. He was the best. <laughs> nice. But, I mean, the best guy in the world, man. You, it, it's really – everybody says it, but you really had to meet the guy. He was – oh, man. I guarantee you, if he was alive today, he'd be the biggest star to, to ever, ever hit this business. I, I would agree with that. How about uh, one of the people that scared me as a child, uh, Kamala? Kamala, oh my God, Jim. <laughs> He's the nicest guy in the world. That's what I hear. I remember, oh, oh, you had me laughing so hard because when I wrestled him, that was back when Slick was teaching me how to do it. And he kept rolling me around, rolling me around, rolling me around. I was laughing so hard in the ring. He's going, stop laughing, man. Stop laughing. He, but have you ever talked to him? I have not. I've, I've tried reaching out a couple times, and uh, I, I would love to. I, I want to. We want to meet him in person. Like we were hoping that he was right. going to be at a con or something. Because uh, uh, being our nightmare as a child, we'd we'd love to fess up to him and say, "Man, you scared the shit out of us." Yeah. Right. And then you sit down. He's like, "Hi, Dwayne. How are you doing today? Is everything going good?" Just the nicest, mellowest, and he always carried a Sega uh, Game Gear with him. The little, remember the little, yes, thing, the little black. Oh. He always had that with him, man. He always just sat there. He never bothered nobody ever. So he's a gamer. That's yeah. amazing. Oh yeah, he's a gamer. He's a gamer. He's a gamer. Oh. Yes, everybody. Uh, I have yes, I have one more I want to ask you about and it, because actually the other guys on the show want to know um, Undertaker. Yeah, you, you Mark, yeah, greatest greatest time. I was there when Mark came in. I remember I was sitting there because I had been there for a while when Mark first came in. I was like, "Hey, Mark, what the hell are you doing here?" He said. I don't know, man. They got me doing this dead man gimmick. Here, look, check it out. Remember that drawings of what different things he was going to be and all? Yep. <laughs> yeah, he, he really, he's like, I really don't know, man, what I'm doing. But what the hell, man? I'm here now. He goes, I finally made it. And I said, yeah, it's awesome, man, because I've seen him down at WCW and all that. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, 
He's like, yeah, man, you seem to be doing all right up here. I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm making a living, you know. He's like, yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, and then uh, he became The Undertaker. And I, I wrestled him every chance I could. He, I got put in that body bag. I know 40, 50, 60, 70. <laughs> you know what I mean? He'd carry me into the back and stand me up in the corner. Did, did you never. did you know? Never did he open it. Never did he oh. open it. He would stand me up in the corner and then leave. So the first thing you do is cover your sack, if you know what I'm saying. Yep. Because somebody's going to bend you over quick. <laughs> oh, my God. First time I didn't know. I was just standing there. and Oh, my God. After that, I knew, man, right away. Cover that. <laughs> cover it up. Cover it up. Did... <laughs> but they would. They'd mess with you, walk by. People would hit you. And, you know, and then finally, one of the agents runs up you. When, when oh, I remember. Undertaker came the in. The to... time. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, one of the funniest times was when I was in a body bag. You know how you would throw it out of the ring and then grab the bag and slide you out? Yep. And then put you over his shoulder? Well, he grabbed the bag and pulled it, and I was still in the ring. The bag tore, and I slid right out of it. <laughs> he had the bag. So he pulled me out. He pulled me out. He looked back, and he goes, I ain't carrying you, asshole. And it punched me. <laughs> it walked away. Oh, my God. <laughs> So he left you dead. You Did you know that he was going to be the mega star, the face of WWF when he came in? I mean, you, what you just said, he's like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing about this dead man. But did you have a feeling like something is going to come of this dead man character as I use oh, my air quotes? Did it, man, one time, once they did it the first time, we knew. We knew. Everybody knew. Yeah. He came in to be that star. Right. You know? Now, Vince, man, come on, man. He knew what he was doing. He still does, right? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you know it. Uh, it's like I say, people People always ask me, is Vince McMahon the asshole? No, Vince McMahon is one of the nicest guys you ever want to meet. But you have to remember one thing. He is a businessman. The reason Vince is an asshole is this. You're going along... You're in there five, six, seven years. You're a big star. You're making tons of money. You're living great. And then he says, you know, I'm kind of done with that character. I think I'm going to hire somebody else. You asshole. See what I mean? Oh, yeah. Right. That's what it is. That's all it is. But if you look at it as it's a business, it's like football, not for long. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a business, dude. It's a business. While you're there, enjoy it, man. I mean, love every minute of it because it's the best. That's where you want to be. That's where you make your money. That's where you go. You know what I mean? I Yeah, I, I completely agree because, you know, a shelf life, and I, I don't mean this mean, but a shelf life of a wrestler could be one day and one injury. I mean, look at, you know, Daniel Bryan's unbelievable that he came back from that. Edge came back last night at Royal Rumble. I mean, these are all people that could have been dead. Right? So a shelf life can end in a day. So Vince is just yep. using his assets. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. And Ed is going to blow the roof off the place if he can stay healthy. I, I agree. He, he, he did last night. Um, but let's talk about one of your shticks that uh, didn't last long, but it could have been something unbelievable, I think, uh, when you were a toxic turtle. Why didn't yeah. that, why didn't that, I mean, it was the prime time to capitalize on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Why? Right. Well, what happened was, we, I had those outfits made, right? And we were like, built like, like two Davy Boy Smiths. Yeah, you were. Big, it made us, you know what I mean? And, uh, so, I had, we had the outfits made and everything, and we carried them for like six months, we were scared to bring them out. So finally, when I got to Barry, I, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. He said, really? I said, yeah, I'm going to put it on, go out in the locker room and start dancing around. So I put them, I put it on, and Barry had to go out for a, for a um, match. I put it on and went dancing out in the locker room. Dan, 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 and then, like, was spinning around on the floor like like I was, you know, doing a, a break dance. And then I stopped and, like, laid there and, like, put my elbow down. Like, you know, you, you watch TV or whatever, you know. And there's a pair of shoes right there. And I go, uh-oh, because I could tell. And I stood right up. And he's laughing his ass off at his Vince. And he goes, 
who's under there? And I took the mask off. And he goes, Christ, I should have known. He said, what the hell? He said, you got another one? I said, yes, sir, I do. He said, okay. Uh, he turned around like, you and you, you're wrestling the Turtles next match. And I said, Mr. McMahon, I can't do next match. He said, why? I said, Barry's in the ring. He said, tell him to dress quick. So I, what happened was me and the guys came up with a match, and I was well, – when Barry came in, we were dressing now. If you've ever been in wrestling tights, not only wrestling tights, but this big, heavy outfit that sticks to you when you're wet and Barry's coming in soaking ring and wet and has no clue and we're jamming his ass in his outfit. So we jam him in, he goes out, and I'm telling him everything to do as we go out. <laughs> so I, I told him, I said, look, Barry, get him to slam you when they do start kicking and all like you're a turtle and you can't get up and I got to roll you over. <laughs> he said, okay. So in the match, he said, slam it. Boom. Wow. I ran out. Boom, flipped me back over. <laughs> you know, just, we were having fun. You know what I mean? It was never a gimmick to last long. It went over. No, it went over big time and everybody loved it. But then I do believe the reason it never got taken was because I believe copyright came in on that. Because we looked exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Michelangelo and Donatello. Yeah. With Davy Boy's, I mean? Boy's build, I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had, we had some muscles put in them. Nobody would ever know it was us. No. No. I, I didn't you know, know I mean? for the longest time. I really didn't. I was like, uh -huh. no shit, it was him. Yeah, it yeah. was you. Mm -hmm. Well, we did everything. I told, you know, Mr. McMahon was like, well, why are you like that? And I said, uh, hey, look, I don't care if you dress up as two turds and cause get your shit together. We just want a job. Right. <laughs> he said, you got a job. You're here all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Speaking of jobs, this is a perfect transition. Thank you. You're doing everything for me. Uh, you then became a part of the job squad with one of our great friends here on the show, Mr. Al Snow. And this is this is the building of you actually being on TV all the freaking time then for, for the job squad okay. and then the transition. Listen to this. This is what I always said and I always will say. Thank God for Al Snow and the job squad. That man is a genius. I don't care what you say. It was so much fun and an honor to know him and hang out with him while I got to know him. You know what I mean? Right. He is a great, great guy. I love him to death, and I always say, thank God for Al Snow and the job squad. <laughs> I always do, always have, always will. Thank God for them because you don't know. If it wasn't for them, I might not have had a job. Right, I, right. I mean, because it was transitioned into other things. Um, how? Why were you? I remember, Dwayne Gill. Dwayne Gill is the light heavyweight champion. Right. Not yeah. Gilbert. Not Gilbert. Dwayne Gill won the title. Right. For and you, you... Know always. I always wondered. I got something to buy. they will get you. I'm the longest reigning light heavyweight champion in history. Right. Fifteen months. I don't have a doll. No, you don't. I don't have a shirt. It's bullshit. I agree. Why Why do we not have this? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go on WWE's uh, longest reigning champions. If you go to singles champions, I'm the eighth longest reigning champion in the history of the company. I'm talking WWWF, WWF, and WWE. And if it, they add tag teams, I'm 14th. Wow. I don't have a doll. And I don't have a doll. We we need to uh, get a hashtag going about getting a doll because you need a doll. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A, you tell me a Gilbert Goldberg set wouldn't well, have sold like a crazy maniac. Uh, I'd buy it today because That's I still collect them. Yeah. And I I still think that I could go out and put Goldberg over and put Gilbert to rest, and they could make a lot of money off of it. One more match. You know what I mean? I could go out there and start calling him out and shit like that. And next thing you know, poop, he shows up. I start running from him. 
And every time he's out there, I sneak up behind him and hit him with something. And then finally, you got to have the match. You, yeah. Uh, again, I'm going to skip around I'm here. In, I'm still in real good shape, and I can put him over big time. You are in great shape. I was going to ask you about that. How was it being in the ring with Goldberg? Finally, you know, him finally coming to the WWE and you and Rock in the ring. How was that uh, in ring chemistry there for the 15 seconds there that happened? There was none. There was none. He didn't like me at all. He hates my guts. He hates my guts. To this day, there does he still none. hate he your guts? He picked me up with one hand by my throat. Yeah, Rock Rock knew me very well. So as I looked over his shoulder, Rock was smiling his ass off. And I'm going to tell you, when he hit him with that chair, it sounded like a cannon went off. And all the boys in the locker room were laughing their ass off. They said it was hilarious. I said, why? He said, you were like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. As soon as he got hit, his hand opened up, and he went, he disappeared. There was just a little dust there. (laughs) 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 You took off, man. I said, isn't that what I was supposed to do? They were like, yeah. I said, well, there you go. (laughs) Does he still carry that heat today with you? I, you know, um. Let's just say I uh, I contacted a few people that I know and seen if I could get a doll made because that you know that would I would help me out in retirement, man. You know what I mean? I'm not a rich man. <laughs> yeah. I work hard every day. I and, uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. I work construction. That that tells you how rich I am. Right. You know, but uh, you know, I tried to get a doll and so and they you know they're not highly influenced but they know a few people that know a few people that know you know what i mean right and they say somebody has a thumb on me really which means somebody has you know i don't want him to have anything so who's that yeah who is that who is that uh i don't have an enemy as far as i know i don't have an enemy i've never done anything bad to anybody never said nothing bad about nobody the only thing I've ever did was make fun of Goldberg. And uh, what I'll I don't really get it. I'll jump back. I'll jump back to the one question I have for from uh, Al Snow. But since we're on Goldberg, how did we know how this came about? We really do. But whose idea? Like, uh, who was it? Vince himself that said, "Damn it, Dwayne Gill, you are a spitting image, just a little bit smaller of Goldberg." Or was it one of the other guys in the back? Like, how did this get presented to you? Okay, this is what happened. It was a night time. We were doing a house show, and I was talking to Kane and Paul Bear about what I did on the Indies. And they were, you know, what did you do? I said, I made fun of all the boys on the Indies. They're like, what? And I said, yeah, I did Stone Old. I said, I come walking out with a creeper and everything because I look just like Stone Cold. And uh, I said, uh, and I did the Underfaker over a long wig and everything come out, you know, messed up. I said, uh, and I did Gilbert and Bob Burgers, huh? Oh, Dwayne Gill, you may have something there, boy. So I, we just laughed it off. And the rest of the night, every time I walked by him, they go, Gilbert, Gilbert, Gilbert. Because I told them about doing it, you know, how it came out and everything, and they were laughing their ass off. So I guess Percy took it to Vince. Okay. And said, Vince. Gil does this thing, man, and he's exactly like Goldberg, but he laughs his ass, does the funny shit. And Vince is like, what? So they called me two days later at home, and they were like, hey, get all your Gilbert shit, because you are now Gilbert. And they sent me a tape of about 10 of his statues. I was like, why did they even do that? You know what I mean? I, I knew everything about it. Right. You know? So I just, we did it, you know? And what was funny was the day the day of it, that afternoon, Vince walks up to me and he puts his hand on my shoulder and he goes, you ready for tonight, Dwayne? And I go, yes, sir, I'm ready. And he goes, good, because I'm really counting on you. Everybody be watching and turned around and walked away. And I went, oh, no. He put all the pressure of the world on me then, right? Right. And Triple H come walking up to me later on that night and he goes, Dwayne. You all right, man? I said, man, fucking. I told him what Ben said. He goes, dude, you're doing a spoof, right? And I said, yeah. He goes, man, just do what we did, like the crock and all that stuff. We never knew what we were doing, man. We just went out there and started raising hell. I said, well, he said, yeah. He said, if you walk out and trip and fall, just jump up like you're supposed to. And go, ah. 
And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, ah, the way the world was off me. He's like, relax, dude. Go have fun. I was like, yeah, you got it, brother. You know, so he saved my ass is what he did. And then when I came out and, you know, they actually wanted me to wrestle Edge. And I said, give me Luna. You want to make fun of the guy? Give me Luna. And Luna's going, no, Dwayne, this is raw. This is raw. I said, Luna, you can probably beat my ass for real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's a badass. But you're right, I yeah. I said, you probably beat my ass for real, girl. Let's be for real. She's like, it's on raw. I said, so what? Come on, Luna. She goes, okay. So then I wrestled with Luna, you know, the first time when I came out. And that was funny as hell, though, man. I came in after, because in the middle of the match, she got lost. And that's when we stopped in the middle of the ring, and she goes, I'm lost. I went, ball shot. So I didn't know what to do. And she reached down, and she, like, smacked my ass. But when she did, I grabbed her arm. And I went, oh, as loud as I could. And, and she's going, let go of my arm. Let go of my arm. Like I'm going, oh, in the face. She's going, let go. Let go, you son of a bitch. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. And I fell over with her arms still in between my legs and everything. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, man! I swear I am. Oh my so, god! Oh yeah! After the match, I came to do the curtain. It was the highest honor I ever got. I came to the curtain, and every McMahon, every wrestler, every stagehand, every one of them were standing there clapping, and every girl's makeup was running off of her face and everything because they were crying. They were laughing so hard, right? And I'm like, yeah, Gilbert, yeah, you know what I mean? Right. I really felt great. And I turn around, and Luna, she drops to her knees and bows like a you know a Japanese woman, put right. her head on my feet. I grabbed her, I picked her up, I said, don't you ever do that again, woman. She said, why? I said, you're my superior. I should be doing it to you. You were in this business long before me. You know what I mean? Right, right, no, touche. I mean, she was showing me ultimate respect. Uh, I should be showing her ultimate respect for doing that for me. Was that night probably one of your greatest nights then since you've had all that, you know, admiration and pomp and circumstances in the back? Was that one of the nights that you can say, this is why I did what I did for so many years? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And the night I won the title, too. Right. Yeah. That was that was one of them too. How about the night of ending Mark Marrow's career? Was that was that great as well? At my hometown with my football team there, right? My nine year old football team. He let me bring him out around the ring and everything, man. How yeah. how did you get picked for that to end his career with air quotes? Uh, Dwayne, you wrestled Mark Marrow, you ended his career. That's it. Boom. Yeah, because he, he wanted to do it like that because he, he picked me. Okay. You know, he wanted to do it that way because it's like, if he can beat me, I'll just quit. You know what I mean? There's no sense of me even wrestling if he can beat me. Oh, okay. Uh, you know? Let's jump forward to uh, some stuff. Like I said, you were at IWC two years ago in Pittsburgh. You were the high stakes. Oh, yeah. You were the high stakes champion there, and that's that's a big regard in Pennsylvania. Um, I know we're coming close to the end of your career, but could we ever see you in IWC again? Uh, it's possible, but it would have to be soon because. Have you heard about February 28th? I have, and I was I, I was kind of throwing you a bone there because I know your last match is coming up. February 28th, yes, sir. And it isn't of my doing, it's of my family, sir. Okay. They, uh, they watched the movie The Wrestler, and they decided, wow, that's my dad, man. That's my husband. That's got to stop. Right. He's not dying in the ring. He's not dying in the ring. You got to stop. You got to stop. You go do your autograph session. You can referee and all that, but you, you can't wrestle anymore. You got to stop. We just had uh, associate producer Evan Ginsmore on the show of The Wrestler, and we we talked in depth about, and don't say I'm, I'm not calling you old, but, you know, 
old. I'm 61. I'm 61. I'm old. I know, but you know what I mean. That you know, uh, <laughs> gotcha. people. You know, people hanging but on I'm and very stuff. Good health. You, you're in better health Thank than God. me. I'm not broke up, man. Like all the other wrestlers. You know what I mean? And I'm I respect. Good shape. And I respect your family for that. Uh, if I could reach through the computer right now, um, I'd give your family a hug because mm -hmm. number one thing in life is family, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially, I mean, especially today at that Kobe Bryant stuff and all. Right. Oh, my God, man. I mean, my, my son, even more, called me today. I love you, Pops. I love you. He calls me every day. I got a 30-year-old son and a 40-year-old daughter. And they call me every day. That's amazing. I, I, uh, uh, good for you. Good for you. I mean that from the yeah, bottom of my heart. You is a word. Is a word you should say a lot. You know. What I it mean? is. It really is. Um, before we start crying together, because I, I oh, can, yeah. I can break down real easy. Why did you pick Ellsworth for your last match? Uh, I, you know. Ellsworth's mother, to be honest with you, I've known my whole life. And James, uh, I, it's true, the little story about when he was a kid. He, I, Mr. Gill, I just saw you last night on Raw. Why are you changing light bulbs at my school? You know what I mean? Yep. And I said, I said, well, Jimmy, one day you'll know. Little do I know. <laughs> right? He found out firsthand. <laughs> but I kind of feel... I might be one of the little reasons why he became a wrestler, you know what I mean? Because he's known him his whole life and everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it, so. it, and it's a nice respect because um, get back to he's, IWC. He's always been respectful to me, you right. know what I mean? And he, he's a good kid. He is a good, he's, he's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a good kid. <laughs> I think, I think, he'll, uh, I think he'll, um, he'll be back. Yeah, you know, I really do. He's a good character. Uh, he's a great character, and you, you know the thing is, uh -huh. uh, him and Carmella were unbelievable together. I I loved oh, every yeah, second of it. Were. Yes, they were. It was awesome. Every second. Uh, let's talk about a couple other things before I let you go. Um, do you, how much sure. how much wrestling do you watch today? I know you 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 work in it. I mean, do you do you keep up with it as much? I do uh, as much as I can. I would say if I catch uh, maybe about an hour of it a week, I'm doing good. But I work so much, you know what I mean? I, I yes, yes, I do. Trust me. Uh, he keeps saying he works so much, and this is no slam on you. We've had this scheduled a couple times, and then oh shit, I, I, I'm still at work. I, you want to do it on my lunch break? I'm not bothering you on your lunch break because you work so hard. Uh, that's why I said do you want to do it at night, and you're like, well, maybe. Like I actually, I actually left early tonight. Two early, two hours early, so I could. Oh, yeah. so now I cut. I, I start. I start at six a.m. Hey, I hear you about starting early. I'm a, I'm a legit garbage man. I start at five o'clock every morning. So as soon as we get done recording yeah. this, I'm going to bed. I I hear you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, when I say start at six, I'm on the job. Right. Yeah, you know? and that's what people don't realize. Oh, you wake up at six? No, I woke up at four. Right. Yeah. You know? Yep. <laughs> um. That's for sure, man. Right? You had your own wrestling academy. You still have it. You still doing a little bit here and there. No, no, no. I, I don't have it anymore. I don't have it anymore. Any, uh, it, uh, it closed. Okay. Would you? Th these are all just random questions. Now, uh, would you be interested? Not that I'm pointing them out, but you know, stopping by and helping OVW or stopping by and helping uh, IWC's, you know, Iron that City. Would be, that would be no problem. That would, yeah. that would be my pleasure. You know what I mean? I, I, that I know. Would be my pleasure. MCW's down by you as well, so you know you have places. Well, see, that... I started MCW. I did not Barry know. Barry Hardy and I started MCW. What? I did not know that. Yeah, Barry Hardy and I started MCW, and what happened was Barry, Barry gave MCW to me, and uh, and I and we we you know everything working great, and, you know, and then we started going so much on the road. Danny McDivitt is actually one of my students at the Baltimore Monster Factory. Oh my God. And yeah, yeah, and then uh, you, like, you don't understand. Axel Rot used to teach for me when I was out of town and everything. Yeah, and what happened was it got so much that Danny, you know, um, I, I basically was more or less going to close the school because I'm on the road so much. I can't open the school. I can't, can't, you know what I mean? 
And Danny's like, well, I'm going to run a couple shows. Can I use MCW? Sure, Dan, go ahead. I'm not using it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not the kind of guy to go, well, I own the name MCW. That bullshit. That's why I, I do believe that's why they changed MCW Pro now. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. But I would never, I would never, ever, ever, ever do anything against Dan McDibbitt. He's a great guy. He never did nothing wrong to me. Been super nice his entire career that I've known him. You know, he started at my school. I mean, that's no lie. Wow. He was the Golden Phoenix. That's that's a piece of information I did not know. You got me on that one. No, I'm sorry, not the Golden Phoenix. I'm lying. He used to dress like the Golden Phoenix. Little Phoenix. Yeah. I forget what they called him, the Phoenix or something. I don't know. Now the Golden Phoenix, that was Mark Breer. Yeah. All right, so uh, one final question, and then I want you to talk about your final match one more time. Um, what advice would you have for kids wanting to get into the ring right now? You know, you have a little a little Gilbert at the age of seven saying, this is what I want to do when I grow up. What are you going to tell them? Don't wrestle until you're 18 in a real ring. Don't do no backyard wrestling. Don't do no wrestling on trampoline. Don't do none of that stuff because what happens when you're young and you break your friend's neck, and now he's in a wheelchair. You still going to hang out with him? No. You hung out with him every day of your life, and then all of a sudden he breaks his neck. Can't hang out with him no more. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Wait. Go to school. Learn the proper way. And then have a ball. Because I tell everybody, do not get in the ring unless you're there to have fun. If you're there to make money and to do it as a job, you're, you're, you're in the wrong life. You're in the wrong life because there's there's two or three million wrestlers and there's two or three hundred jobs. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So unless you're one of the lucky few, you know, it, it's just not going to happen. And believe me, all these people send all this stuff to Vince and do this and do that. Believe me, they know everything everybody's doing. And when they want them, they'll just reach down and say, thank you, come here. And that, believe me, I know that for a fact. And you talk about Mark. Okay, I'll give you my philosophy on marks. The wrestlers are the real marks. Because we said, hey, I don't give a shit how much it hurts, how bad it hurts, how many bones I break, how many muscles I tear. I want to get in that ring and be one of them. So we are the real marks. The ones we call marks are smart people because they say, you know, I ain't busting my body up like that. I'll just pay the 20 bucks to watch these guys kill themselves. Touche, you win Correct. that battle. Oh, yeah, my God, yeah. <laughs> Correct. I, what you're doing I'm now. Calling I'm calling myself a mark. I'm calling, but I believe solely that the, the uh, wrestlers are the true marks because we do whatever it takes. Yeah, you're right. Think about it. You're right. You're 60. Uh, you're 61. I'm 42, yeah. so we got a 20-year span of difference there. You're going to go out and get thrown around the ring and bounce up the next day and go lift construction, you know, cementing everything. I bitch every day that I have to jump on and off a garbage truck. So you you win. You definitely win. You guys are the marks. I agree with you. No, you can you can ask Ellsworth, man. We've been on we've been on shows like in New York where I got to drive four and a half hours to get home to go to work. I don't even sleep at night. Boom, go to work next morning. 24 like, hours. Just stay here. I can't, bro. I can't. I don't make your money no more. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk about your yeah. final match one more time. February 28th, where is it at? At Michael's 8th Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland. Uh, ACW is holding an Adrenaline Championship Wrestling. James Ellsworth is my final match. And guess what I found out? That little son of a bugger just won the light heavyweight title. What? So if he doesn't wrestle again in ACW, he'll be wrestling me for the light heavyweight title. And you could go out and retire as champion. If I kick his ass, but he does say any man with two hands, which I have to agree with because look at me. <laughs> you have two hands. You know what I mean? I got to gotta agree with him there, but I'm going to make sure I shove him hands up his ass. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to have a lot of family there, man. I mean, everybody, people I ain't talked to in 10 years, the old friends, old friends. Hey, man, I'm going to be there. All right. That's yeah, so. 
That's that awesome. Makes me feel good because that means these people have been following me. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I we have been. Uh, you've you've busted your ass for us. You can, you continue to entertain us. Um, it, like I said at the beginning of this, it was a pleasure meeting you at WrestleCade, and I couldn't wait to talk to you. Uh, I'm so glad you, you gotta check out one of my cameos, brother. They're hilarious. <laughs> well, you got to go to my cameos and look at them. You'll laugh. You'll die. <laughs> where can we find those? Uh, right on Cameo. You know Cameo. Just yeah. Right to Dwayne Gill. Okay. You're right on Gilbert. Look for Gilbert or Dwayne Gill in the cameos. You and they show a list of them. Just pop, pop them up. You'll laugh your ass off. Nice that the guys go there too to uh, to find that. Um, Dwayne, uh, again, thank you for spending some time with us tonight, and uh, I I wish you the best for your final match, and hopefully we can uh, touch base again real soon. And you have a championship the rest of your life, right? You got it, brother. Yes, sir. You know it. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. Anytime, anytime, you just call, man. Didn't I tell you, didn't I tell you that he is a wonderful human being? After I stopped the recording, we talked about another 5, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, we hung up, and then I forgot to ask him something, so I sent him a text, and boom, he sends a text right back. He is just, he loves his fans. When he said that earlier, he loves his fans, and he wouldn't be where he is, you know, without Al Snow, without Barry Hardy. He, yeah, without a doubt, but he knows without us fans, he wouldn't be where he is, and he will take every minute that he can to sit down, hang out, and you know what? Talk to us. Uh, again, in time, have him on again. There's matches that we can actually sit down and talk to him, say, hey, let's talk about the whole Mark Merrill match. But it's just amazing, and I loved it. He He's a kind-hearted human being that just loves everyone and guys if you can get out and support him in his last match please do the links posted on you know our facebook account as well get out there support him give him you know all the praise and glory as uh he rides on into the sunset and wow uh again thank you Dwayne. thank you gilberg for coming on the show it was an honor to have you on here, and uh, I hope we can connect real soon and uh, have some burgers and fries or a couple beers or whatever we were talking about. Guys, if there's anybody else you'd like to hear from on Can Crushers, you know, shoot us over a message at cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Get us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you can find us. You'll be able to link up with us, and we'll reach out to them, you know. Gilbert, if you want us to talk to any of your old, old school friends, let us know. We'll bring them on, too. We have a blast doing this. This show is uh, more for us. It really is because we love sitting down. We're Marks, as you said, but you're the true Mark. So, again, thank you once again. Guys, I hope you liked everything. And if you want to hear more, shoot us a message. But, as we always say, remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. <laughs>